Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at defining potential difference, the volt, calculating potential difference, and we're going to finish with a summary. So first of all we need to actually understand what we mean by potential difference. We have established that charge is transferred through free electrons in the metal wires of a circuit. So we can see in our circuit here we have free electrons in the metal wire. We also have this battery and we have a lamp. So we've seen previously that electrons are charged particles. So as they move around the circuit, charge flows around the circuit. And we've also established that current is the rate of flow of charge. So if the electrons are moving around the circuit, there's a current going through the circuit and it's going through all the different components. We know that electrons have a kinetic energy due to their motion. So for example, this electron here is traveling with the speed v. And we know that if this electron is in motion, it's therefore got some kinetic energy as well. And the kinetic energy is obviously just dependent on the velocity. We can think of the electrons as transferring energy as they move around the circuit. So we can see here we have our circuit. So we've got a battery. We've got a lamp again and we've got our electrons in our wire. And we've seen since we've got current moving around the circuit, these electrons are moving around the circuit, which is what creates our current. And as they move around the circuit, they actually transfer energy. And they transfer energy to different components. So they also transfer energy around. And this energy comes from their kinetic energy, from their motion. Each electron picks up a packet of energy at the battery. So when the electron comes around to the battery, it actually picks up some energy. So this is what a battery does. Its purpose is to provide the electrons in the circuit, in the metal wire, with energy so that they can move around the circuit and provide the other components in the circuit with energy. So the electrons then carry this energy to the components in the circuit. So we've got our electron here and it's moving around the circuit with its little packet of energy. When the electron reaches the light bulb, it does work passing through it and so deposits some or all of its energy. So when it comes to the light bulb, it's harder for the electron to pass through the light bulb than it is for it to pass through the metal wire of the rest of the circuit. So it's going to have to do some work. And when it does this work, it's actually going to transfer some of its energy or perhaps all of its energy to the light bulb. So this is the energy from the electron and it's going to the light bulb. So the work done by the electron, which we're going to call W, is equal to the energy loss of the electron. This energy is then transferred to other forms by the component. In this case, light energy and heat energy. And obviously this will depend on the purpose of the component. So for example here, the purpose of a lamp is to use it as a source of light. So it's going to be converting the energy it receives from the electron into light energy. However, we've seen previously that components are rarely 100% efficient, so it's also going to be producing some thermal energy as well. The work done per unit charge of electrons traveling through a component is called the potential difference, PD, across the component. The potential difference is defined as the work done or energy transferred per unit charge. So now that we know what potential difference is, we're going to think about how we can calculate it and also its unit, which is the volt. We can write the potential difference, PD, in terms of an equation. So the potential difference for component is equal to the work done by the electrons divided by the charge moved through the component.
Another term for potential difference is the voltage. So we can rewrite our equation above as voltage is equal to work done divided by charge moved. And we can also write this in symbol form. So for voltage, we use the symbol capital V. So the voltage is going to be equal to W divided by Q. So this is our equation for potential difference or voltage, depending on what term you're using. The unit for potential difference is the volt. One volt is the potential difference across a component when one joule of work done is transferred to other forms per unit of charge passing through the component. And we can write this in symbol form. So one volt is going to be equal to one joule per coulomb. And this comes from our equation. So we said that voltage is work done divided by charge moved. The unit of work is joule and the unit of charge is coulomb. So we're dividing one joule by one coulomb. So we get one joule per coulomb, which is equivalent to one volt. So what is the voltage across a component if two joules of work is done moving one coulomb through it? So we write down our equation and then we substitute in our numbers. So we've been told that two joules of work are done. So we write in two joules and two joules of work is done moving one coulomb. So the charge moved is one coulomb. So this gives us a voltage which is equal to two volts. So now that we know what the equation for potential difference is, we can look at calculating potential difference in a bit more detail. We can apply the equation for potential difference to components in a circuit. So for example, here we have a circuit made up of a battery, we have our metal wire, and we have our lamp again. For example, if 25 joules of work is done when four coulombs of charge passes through the lamp in this circuit, what is the potential difference across the lamp? So we've got electrons passing through this lamp and they're doing work when they pass through the lamp. And the work done is equal to 25 joules. We've also been told that the amount of charge passing through the lamp is equal to four coulombs. So Q is equal to four C. So all we need to do is apply our equation for voltage to find the potential difference. So voltage is work done divided by charge moved. So this is going to be equal to 25 joules divided by four coulombs. And this gives us a potential difference of 6.25 volts. And to two significant figures, this is 6.3 volts. And the reason we're giving it to two significant figures is because the greatest number of significant figures given in the question is two significant figures. Similarly, we can determine the energy transferred to a component with a certain voltage. So for example, a certain amount of energy W, which is the work done by the electrons, is transferred to this lamp that has voltage V. So let's look at this in an example. How much energy would be transferred from the electrons to the lamp if three coulombs of charge pass through a potential difference of 10 volts? So we've been told that three coulombs of charge have passed through this lamp and that the potential difference across the lamp is 10 volts. So our first step is to write out the equation for potential difference. So we've seen that the equation for potential difference is V is equal to W divided by Q, work done per unit charge. Now we want to rearrange the equation to make the work done by the electrons the subject. So all we're going to do is multiply V by Q. So now we get that W is equal to VQ. Now finally, step three is to substitute values into the equation to calculate the work done by the electrons. 
So the work done by the electrons, it's going to be equal to 10 volts, which is the potential difference, multiplied by 3 coulombs, the charge moved. So this gives us the work done to be 30 joules. So that's how much work the electrons have done to move through the lamp. We use a device known as a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across a component. So this here is our voltmeter. It measures the voltage in volts. And we can see that this dial here is going to tell us the reading of the voltage. So this is our scale. Voltmeters are connected on a different line or branch to the component. So they're connected in parallel. So here in our circuit, we can see we have our cell here. This is the component that we're measuring the potential difference of. And here is our voltmeter. So this is the circuit symbol we use for a voltmeter. And we've said that we always connect voltmeters in parallel to the component. And this is because what the voltmeter does is measure the energy of the electrons before they pass through the component and after they pass through the component and therefore it can find the difference in their energy and it will tell us how much work they've had to do to pass through the component. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.